Hello, today I'd like to show you how I simply sash some five inch squares. So I'm not actually going to alter the five inch squares, I've just got squares here and I'm going to put what we call sashing in between. I have actually done a simple pattern, I've done quite a few patterns, they're available to purchase and download on my website. Um, this is a five inch, I did, have done quite a lot of five inch square patterns and this one is just simply called five inch squares, sashed squares, sorry. And without altering the five inch squares but just sewing so I'm not sure how well you can see this but there's a little strip in between each square and then a little tiny square at each intersection so the strip in between is the sashing and the little square in between is the sashing posts so and I often put the posts in because it helps keep everything lined up and it's easier to put together at the end so I'll just show you how I do this there's a couple of different ways you can just join a whole long row of strips and little squares to go in between and some squares and sashes in a row but I like to attach my sashings to my squares or they could be of course pieced blocks I would do the same thing for that so because I'm using five inch squares I found that I quite like a one and a half inch finished um, sashing strip so I'm going to cut my strip so I'm going to sash my squares today with some white fabric um, my sample or my pattern is very dark but uh, I'm going to do something a little bit lighter and brighter this time so I'm going to cut my, using my board to help me mark, uh, help me line up my ruler, I'm going to cut my sashing pieces. Now I've cut my strip off the fabric already that's two inches wide because I want it to finish at one and a half inches. So I'm just going to trim off the end. I've got it folded over in half so it's double. Just trim off the end and then I'm going to come along five inches using the markings on my board and I'm going to cut. Now there'll be five inches because my squares are five inches. So they need to be the same size as your square, So, or if you're using a piece block, whatever it is in there. So I would come along and just cut this whole strip into 5 inch by 2 inch strips so that they're ready to use. And I would need, of course, a few more. I'd work out how many strips I need before I started. And then my sashing posts, that's the little squares that go in between where these intersect. I'm using this green for. And because we've cut the sashing strips two inches wide, we're going to cut the little squares two inches square. So I've cut my strip of green, it's already two inches wide, and again it's folded over, it's double, and I'm going to cut, using the, bo the board for the um, help me with the measurements, I'm just going to cut along every two inches so that I get my squares ready. So I think you've got the hang of that now. So those are my little squares and those are my sashings. So I'll just uh, quickly run through what I do next. Um, so first of all, I've got all my, my pile of squares. Um, and and I'm, I have done some ahead, so I'll show you those. But I'll just uh, work on the square here so you can see what I do. So I've got my square and my piece of sashing. And I usually work to a system. I usually put the sashing strip on the left-hand side of my block and I'm going to do this onto all of my squares or if they were blocks. So I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch seam down one side which will end up being the left hand side um, as I look at it. So just my quarter inch seam and generally I would be doing quite a few but I'm just going to work on one to show you but I would just chain piece those through because it's the same it's the same thing for all of the, the squares now. So I'm just going to press that seam so I would have them all joined on and then I could take them all to the iron and I could press them and because I'm working with white I want to press that seam in towards the colour so that it's least obvious. There will be occasions when you can't help having the seam showing under the white but overall it won't be a problem. So I've got my sashing strip on one side on my left and I would do that as I said with all of my squares so I've just prepared a few ahead here so these would all be done and when you lay them together you can see that you've got this nice strip in between now you could join all these up into a row and then you have to make a narrow strip but I don't really want to do that I'm going to now attach to all of the rest of my sashing strips which I'll have worked out how many I need I'm going to attach one of my sashing posts to one end of each of those now. 
So first of all, you don't attach your posts, you put them onto your bigger square. Then you attach your posts to all the rest of the strips, just to one end. So we'll just do a couple of these. Same thing, I would chain piece these through, just your quarter inch seam allowance. And continuing on with those. Um, and I, just, I would press those. And again, I'll press them into the, the seam into the colour because uh, it's a nicer way to do it. And it also will allow the seams to just sit snugly together when you come to put the next bit on. So just press that seam just into the colour. Okay, so what I would do now is I would attach one of those strips to the bottom side. So I've already got my strip on the left hand side of my square and now I'm going to attach one of, one of these strips with the sashing post onto the bottom there. And you'll see because you've pressed those seams both into the colour that that seam will just snugly butt together. So I'm just going to sew that now with my quarter inch seam allowance. This is quite a fun way to use up some of these um, delightful squares. Um, sometimes you don't want to cut them up, they're too nice. It also makes a fairly quick quilt if you're looking for, for a quilt fairly quickly, as sometimes we do. Okay, so now I've, I've attached that onto there. And I'll just take that to the iron. And again, I'm going to press it mostly towards the colour. At this stage, a little bit of the seam will be under the white, but that just can't be helped. So I've done all my squares with one strip on them and then I'm going to put this next strip on the bottom of all my squares. So I've just done a few here so you can see how we're coming together now. So you can see they're going to get joined together as squares rather than long skinny strips of the sashing and posts. So, so continuing on doing all the blocks like that and, but we're still, when, we, when we've joined them all up for a quilt, we're still going to find that we've got to join on some sashing around the outside. That's because I have sashed completely around all the squares rather than leaving the outside without sashing. Um, so having got all our squares in this form where we've got the sashing on two sides and one post, I would now come along and for all the ones that are up the side of my quilt, I'll be putting another sashing and post onto the side. So leaving the top row, we'll do those ones in a minute. So coming up the side row, we'll pop this one on here. I hope this is all making sense. It's really quite straightforward when you go to do it. it just makes it much easier than um, having to join up lots of rows of skinny bits. So I'm just going to press another one. Okay so now we've got all these ones and I've just done some ahead again so that you can see coming up the side here You can see now that that's becoming quite complete in the way it looks by bringing those that on the edge there and it's just all joins up nicely. Then we've still got the top row. So the top row is very much like the side row. You're going to be joining another, um, another patch on. Oops, we better come, come this way a little bit. <laughs> right, bring all these down. So to go along the top edge now, because we've worked out how to do this, we're going to join another one of our strips along the top of each block. And so, so you're getting the hang of it now. So we've got the three sides on. So the side blocks and the top blocks actually look the same. It's, if you've got a one-way fabric, you might want to keep an eye on which way they're going. But otherwise, that's the same process. So we've started off doing just the one side, then we put the two sides on. Now we've got three sides on just for the top and the side, not for the majority of the blocks. Most of your blocks in there, 
you won't be doing that to. Now we've then got one small problem at the end. We've got to work out how to get this last square on the end. So one, one piece of your sashing, sorry, you've done them all this way with one post on. The very last one has a post on both ends. So we'll pop one on the end here. And that just finishes off that last corner. Okay, press that seam in towards the colour. And that's going to go on on the last square. So the very last block I've done my got my sashing ready with the post on the end. So this is the very last block. It's going to be the last one in the top corner, but it needs to have a little sashing post up there. So I'm going to sew that last one on. So this is the only block that has, the only square that has the, the sashing all the way around it is the very last one that you put in. press that and then you'd be ready to join up your rows of, of um, all your squares so you can see when you when you place that one in there that just completes it now presumably you would well quite likely you would have more squares it would be a bit bigger quilt but we started off we just put the strip on the one side then we put the, the post onto the strip like this and then we pop that onto the, the bottom side so I work on the left side then coming along and doing it along the bottom side and then for the for the side row we put one up the other side and for the top row we've placed one along the top and the very last square we've got one on that side and there but we've got the extra square sewn onto the sashing there. So, and then, then they're quite manageable. Now you can just join up your rows of squares rather than having these long skinny strips to place between rows, which I've always found quite hard to manage. And by popping the sashing post in, you get all your corners nice and everything matches. Um, if you don't pop, put the post in and you just have really long strips, there's the opportunity for things to maneuver a bit and they, things won't be lined up in just the same way. Um, of course, quite possible, but this is just a, a fun way of doing it. Sometimes when I don't want another colour um, in the posts I might even still put the sashing post in but in the same fabric as my sashing so it won't really show when it's all quilted and everything but it just helps me keep everything lined up which I quite like to do. Um, so I have made a quilt um, or a couple of quilts uh, using this method so I thought I might quickly show you those. So I have made the quilt from this pattern that I showed you when it's just here behind me and these are obviously much darker colours, but uh, still quite delightful. And it's just the five inch squares done with the sashing, just the way I've shown you. And then I've got another quilt the same, but a much, much larger quilt. And, and done all in delicious blues. So you can get an idea of just using one colour, but variations of it. Um, and all the sashing and the border are the same and this time with the little sashing posts I have used a little stripe and I've used it on the binding as well and so I have kept my stripe that's it's only a little stripe that's in those posts all going the same way so that would be just something to keep an eye out for if you were using one-way fabric in there somewhere so hopefully that will help somebody use up some of their five inch squares um, or maybe you don't need to use them up you just want to use them so a great idea for, for quick sashing and um, a delightful quilt at the end. Thank you.